Not a little bit. I think it's it's but, more about just keeping the waves pushed oh, out like forever. Because oh, 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 oh. a late game Naga Siren will crush a Huskar. I still got a Huskar. We're gonna go with that. Uh, blink daggers. Do 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 but yeah, newbie have a very, very aggressive lineup, and they can apply just all the pressure, all the pressure in the world. Now, it's uh, I mean, do they lane it uh, across one as well? Are we going to see some aggression from newbie, or or do they just keep the safe lane as the try lane? I don't feel like they need to put themselves in a unnecessary, like risky position. They they have the heroes that will hit their timing as long as they're getting farm, and they're going to hit their timing so fast by having marksmanship and level 4 precision aura that they can group, they can kill Roshan because they're going to have amp on KP. They have Drow aura, so it's going to just drop like a rock. And MVP, they got some really good deep push, but I'm not entirely sold on their ability of taking team fights before their core items are out. So, I mean, it's just about newbies winning their lanes and doing the snowball effect off of their laning phase. It's pretty standard Drow things, but it just it's made that much more scary by the fact that they have an Oracle Huskar. That makes it just terrifying actually and from uh from the looks of things the lanes are going to be about what we expected well, to kick things off move grabs the bounty bottom mp grabs the bounty top and uh lane wise yeah top lane for rev on the elder titan we can see uh both febby and dubu smoked up at the moment on the cottle and ogre respectively and on the bottom lane, last but not least for MVP, will be Kuo on the safe lane, Nagasarin on the mid lane, Moo, over on the side of Nubi. Oscar is his hero. And we'll see the backup from Kaka, Oracle. Top lane, that's probably going to keep our eyes out, because how Drow, Chuan, Disruptor, they could be about to receive a little bit of a surprise. Dubu and Febby ready for a wraparound. MVP getting ready to kick this off on style. If they can find the opening, how and Chuan need to be careful. They do have an Oracle relatively nearby, but MVP starting to move in. Surprise, boys. Ogres here to stop oh. into the Illuminate. MVP, absolutely beautiful. And Tron only just gets away. But that's the combo. And Newbie did not expect that or see that coming out whatsoever. That was slick. That was a very, very well executed gank. And they were so confident they could get that kill too. And after just getting the first blood, we already see the... Kato's going to go ahead and TP away. They're going to leave the aggressive dual lane, which is what we expected, but that smoke move? Man. Who actually sees that one coming? That is so random. That's absolutely how you kick it off. And of course, last but not least on this bottom lane, we didn't mention it, but we need to KP. It's on the off lane, Slada. Manning up against QO's Naga, and indeed, as you said, Febby, now joining the forces down bottom with the Kato play. It makes more sense to just have him down here after the first kill. Yeah. Because the, the only reason that kill works is because of the surprise factor. If you're just sitting in lane, you know, throwing out random spells, and you have ignite and no stun, it seems pretty much impossible to get a kill against the tri lane of newbie. But because they were just not expecting that level of aggression coming from that angle, it's just a very, very quick kill on the drow. And taking the first blood and running is not a bad plan for MVP, especially considering, you know, you want to stunt the growth of the heroes as much as you can. And it might not slow down house farm a tremendous amount, but does put you in a better position at least. Doobie's going to come to the mid lane, but him picking up the Invis room was spotted out. It would just uh, reveal himself immediately. Oh, that was a misfire. Uh, they tried for a chance, Arrow. That was a, I hope you try to dodge my arrow, Arrow. He got the range creep. Intended, I'm sure. Yeah. Oh, you've got Febby coming around as well. Get a Illuminate Blast. So he's going to contact an MVP. Thinking about moving in on this one. See how heavy they're going to dive on it. Oh, Doobie, Mango's up straight in on Tamu, and they'll take the kill. MVP. Second one so far this game, a reaction from KP. I'm going to cross, but Dubu turns around and gives him a right clobbering. And KP won't be able to find anything with this TP reaction. In the first two minutes of this game, MVP coming out with the plays. Their movements are just so crisp. Like, he dodged the ward when Febby was walking towards the, the middle lane behind the tower because the, the ward actually only sees a good chunk of the river. It doesn't see all the way to the rune spot. So unfortunately for Mu, he just didn't scout the, the keeper getting behind this tier one. And then all of a sudden you get blasted in the face and you got three heroes on you and you're like, uh, what do I do? Hopefully teammates can TP. And this is, uh, this is kind of one of the problems when you pick uh, two supports and neither one of them really has a disable because you can't stop that gank as those supports. You have to be there before the gank starts in order to prevent it. And unfortunately, uh, Kaka and Chuan just were not ready for that.
CS wise, everything seems to be fairly balanced. The two safe laners, 19 for 6, 17 for 2. And the mid lane, 13 for 2, 12 for 6. Uh, off lane, slightly going a little bit better for KP. He's uh, managed to find a bit more farm and of course actually had a bit more space on his own as Frev was helped out at the start. Whereas KP's been able to suck up the solo XP and as we can see he's uh, got about a level advantage um, on his offlane slider compared to Frev's Elder Titan. Looking to lead in onto Moo. A stomp is going to miss. Moo dukes out in between it all and Dubu will be unable to close in. Top, Kaka takes the rune away from MP. Maybe grabs an illusion, unable to, to come across and look for any more action. But uh, we're actually going to see MVP at this point. They do have the three heroes around mid, and perhaps, uh, you know, want to credit us up at that last minute was a little bit ineffective for MVP as they don't find anything with the presence of those heroes there. Well, that time they walked through the ward vision. Yeah. Uh, Febby, the first time, just got, got behind the tower and got on the other side of the river without being scouted. But oh, when you no. see it coming, it's a heck of a lot easier to get out of the way of, and Boo will save himself. For a little bit later in this game. But MVP still got two kills. The landing phase for newbie as expected. Once things start to slow down, there's not as many kills going the way of the, the MVP squad. They're just pulling ahead and farm over time. Like the Drow is farming very well now. A little bit behind the Naga, but again, that was a, a Drow who got first blooded and then the Slardar and the Huskar are sitting at about the same CS. Probably just I'll let KP have it with a quick blast. Top Kaka comes in, drops the ward. I'll see if uh, Dube is able to make anything happen here. He's, he's just going to come round by the looks of it. Oh, bottom lane, KP. Oh, indeed. Moving forward. He's, he's just covered the straight TP out with the instant. Already used. Nothing else that they could do there to st stop him. And KP as well with the, the quick with it, just TP straight to the tower. Making sure he doesn't miss out on any of this XP so he can still hang around rather than TPing straight back to base. Well, getting an early amp is awesome in this game because as soon as you get Marksmanship Aura going on how and you have amp, you can just go kill Roshan and it's a super fast Rosh even at this early stage in the game. Mid lane Moo is starting to break away quite a bit. I mean, 24 against the 17, but more importantly so, he's uh, denying quite a bit from MP. And we can see nearly a, a full level in difference between these two heroes in the mid lane. So Moo certainly having the favorable time, How? Eyes on him, and Dubu is going to move in. Brev, ready with the wrap around. There's the backup from Chuan. Pops down the field to try and hold back MVP, and he's trapped both of them. Very nicely played from Chuan, and now, in fact, maybe the turnaround. Thunder strikes onto Ferev. Kaka comes around with the purifying flames, and they'll punish Ferev. <laughs> Dubu getting themselves the first kill on the board. Chuan could be in trouble as MP comes across with an image rune. Oh, Kaka with the Fate Seeding, making sure that Star Storms is absolutely screw all. And Chuan is saved by the plays of Kaka. Their very nice Oracle performance. The four have held his stomp. I, I don't know, like, if he thought he was going to get stunned or something like that, but he pretty much just didn't cast stomp at all. If he gets glimpsed, I suppose, the uh, Tuan was on his game, he probably would have been able to cancel it, but I think you have to at least try to throw out that spell. Otherwise, you know, Howe just walks it off for free and doesn't go down. It's a little bit unfortunate there for MVP that they weren't able to get the kill they were looking for, but I think for now they're, they're, they're doing enough. It's just that newbie were always going to win the laning phase, assuming everyone's just sitting in their lanes and farming. But rotations are what MVP can do. And MVP, they are of course getting a lot of farm on QO. Top of the CS at the moment, 47 for 10. Uh, KP has not really been able to do much in terms of stopping QO from getting his farm. He's been consistently using the side camps as well to maximize it in this laning stage. So the Naga is going to get very, very rich. So it'll be interesting to see what newbie do in response to that. And as we've seen so far, pretty much just Tuan and Kaka staying up top to help out how. Any time that they do go on him. Talking about going on people, bottom lane. AP, forced back again. Manly causing to be a little bit of an issue. And pretty much was stopping KP from being able to be aggressive against the Naga. As uh, Febby's doing a good job of making sure the space is there for QOs to farm. At least KP is getting a level. So that, that's, I think, for him, one of the more important things. Again, having the app is great. Having the level uh, 4. Slithering Crush is going to be great too, or sometimes uh, Slardars go 3-3. Depends on the, the player preference, I guess. But now with the, the Drow Aura enabled with the Marksmanship, we're going to see a huge damage increase, so I would expect Moo to pull even farther ahead of the Marana. I mean, he's 41 and 17. He's, he's got like half the denies as the Marana has CS. That just goes to show how dominant he's been. Looks like Kaka and Moo are doing a bit of a rotation here. Realizing that marksmanship is online, they just want to try to get the tower down, assuming 
as soon as humanly possible. Just a very crisp movement over the map, realizing their timing and should uh, should be able to pressure this tower quite a bit. Yeah, we absolutely. You just have Mu there being ready to push as well, and likely the MVP come through for a, a defense. That looks to just get a bit of damage in return onto the tier one mid as MP pushes forward. And just because in the bottom, just QO and Febby maintaining perfect lane equilibrium here. Febby coming across. As you said, level 7. But, uh, not going to make a move yet. No backup at the moment. Top lane newbie do finish off the tower as expected. Now we may see a bit of help come in for KP. Chuan's come down with a smoke. He's just hit 6, so has the static storm. And this could be the perfect bait. Already trying to go on to KP now. The Thunder Strikes are set up, but immediately QO reacts with the Zop. Chuan. Unable to find the setup now. He has got three points in the glimpse, but the detection isn't quite there. Does lay down a sentry, but QO already far, far enough away to stop Tron from getting the lap. So nice usage there of the song to avert disaster. Nonetheless, Howe's going to come down here as well. And Newbie, even though they don't find the kill initially, they'll try and turn this into another tier one push. And I think with the song being down, you know, a lot of people would look at that gank for Newbie and say, oh man, they didn't kill the Naga. Sure, that's true. But without song, I think Newbie just want to go in. <laughs> Found Dubu, but the arrow from MP comes up to KP. It's going to stun him, but the damage isn't there. Kaka healing up the Slardar now with the Fortune Zen onto Dubu, allowing KP to close the gap. Now uh, we'll take the final touch. They find the kill. At the same time, we can see, yeah, Mu just forcing MP to back away from this whole scenario. Newby with the second kill on the board. They scan behind the tower. They know that there's some action going on there as Fabi hangs around. Newby. It's like they're actually going to pull back a little bit here. They're not going to keep the full team down. Oh, they're going to Roche. Ooh. This is, um, like I mentioned, this is the lineup that can kill Roche at a very, very early stage in the game, especially when you have the Oracle Disarm. And they're showing at least one hero on the map, so this will be very difficult for MVP to anticipate. They're not going to see heroes in lane for a bit, though. So the, the longer that it takes Newbie to kill this, the more likely that MVP will be able to scout it. They're going to send a Naga Siren Illusion perhaps towards the Roshan, but are they fast enough? It looks like it might already be done by the time it gets there, at least. By the time well, now they, they obviously works. know now. Yeah. But yeah, it could be too late. Yeah, and I think MVP realized this as well. They're not even going to try and head over. So maybe we'll get the free Roach. And indeed, it's the exact timing that he needed to with this kind of lineup. Who's going to take it? But Aegis on the Huskar, ready for the next. He's got Armlet too. Next fight. So he's got the 34 bonus damage from Precision Aura. Uh oh, bottom lane. Yeah, Fabi in trouble. KP slithers in, closes the gap, and the damage from How ripping the Keeper of Light to, to pieces. And now with the man down, can be ready to push at the same time. MP actually able to find a tier one on his own. More money into the bank of Mirana. But the true test of newbie this game is going to be how fast they can take the map control away from MVP. Because for every like CS that QO gets closer to the Radiance, it's going to give newbie more and more fear. Oh, QO tries to come up with a move like the Sentry's laid down. The trap's actually not going to be perfect as Chuan unable to catch out. Oh, the Siren, and now the turnaround is there. Onto KP. Husband is going to come through. Moose still moving forward. Wants to jump in and immediately look it for Dubu, but the blinding light is going to make it half of to fight. He can't get the punches in onto Dubu. He'll take QO instead. The Tron brings him back with the glints. But they get a big kill, Newbie. They'll turn it into a tier one push. And this is the exact momentum that Newbie were going to be looking for with their lineup. KP, in fact, seeing if he can find himself anything else on the back of this. He spotted out MP. MP, no leap for six seconds. Bevy is around, and he'll try and slow down KP with a mana leap, but KP moving forward now. The blinding light's there, but at the same time, Tron gets the vision for Glimpse. MP's lead comes off cooldown just in time. He jumps away. Newbie unable to find themselves another kill other than the Naga, but they do finish the tower off, of course. Ow! To make it a very, very aggressive movement there. 12 and a half minutes in, 4 for 2. Newbie is certainly starting to get the... Momentum that they wanted with this draft. Taste. Taking over to QO. 2.1k gold, 2.2 pretty much towards the relic. And Nubia are amping up the pressure. Quite literally, with KP finding these initiations. And now 1500 towards the Blink Dagger. You saw the how powerful Nubi is in that fight bottom when they get the, the ensnare off on the KP and Kaka just puts Fate's Edict on him. He gets arrowed and eats Star Storm and just takes absolutely no damage. And at that point, the arrow is the biggest kill tool I think they have right now. 
normally it's just arrow into Star Storm and a dead hero, but if that can't happen, MVP have a significantly harder time getting killed. Ooh, and Ubi, they found themselves a Dubu. Dubu. He's down, and Ubi again. They'll take a hero, they'll take a tower. And MVP are certainly struggling to stop it at this stage of the game. This is the train, Owen. This is the train that has no brakes. This is how you deal with a resident sleeper Naga. You just pick Radiance a Huskar. Our oh, down lanes attack. is working for the time being. You can see MP trying to skip the creep wave. And uh, it's actually going to work. There's no creeps with Nubi at the moment. So this push will be stopped. Well, not yet. Oh, these are fighting for it. Okay, the back to the regen's not kicked in as of yet. Oh, now it has. Uh, do they care? <laughs> Looks like they don't. Yeah, they do it. Yeah, oh, they actually they give it on. No, oh, okay. <laughs> Backdoor regen open. He messes up his armor toggle as well. Oh, oh my And, uh, oh, is he in trouble now? Obviously, uh, should be fine. Kaka's still there to back him up. There's a false promise available for Mara for the okay, Fiji. How? Hello. Good pick. MVP. Well. Removing a, a fair amount of Newbie's effective right click with that kill. Moon dodging the stomp. AP coming forward. They get held back by Dubu's Fire Blast. And looking for Forev. They get the vision for the glimpse. Forev's going to be crushed down by KP. So one for one trade. Still hanging around. MVP under the cover of Moonlight Shadow. MP. He's going to move forward. Can he get an arrow? In a couple of seconds, he's going to have it available. A newbie with four. Man still standing in the mid lane. And they're about to receive their bonus damage again from the drow as Hal comes back into the fray. Maybe take a tier two at the Radiant's end of the day, but certainly not without the casualties. Oh, it's still hitting those timings and getting the object Dyer's objectives that they need done. At the same time, though, QO is continuing to rack up the gold, and he's just about hit that first hurdle as the relic gold is is all but complete. Just a 12, 30 gold to go. Yeah, they might actually be holding it like well enough yeah. to where QO can get his Radiance and they can start getting that mass deep push that their team is desperately looking for. But MVP, they are looking for a kill and they might find the Drow again. Here comes the Dubu, Febby, Ferev, Hype Train. Ow. He needs help, there's no tier 1 for any kind of backup to come in. He'll silence Dubu, he's looking for the TP out, but the storm from Ferev is there. How? In a whole world of pain, backup's coming in from KP, are they going to be able to save him? Oh, the Star Storm is too much! How's been bursted? Now, Newbie, the question is, can they actually find him to pick up anything else here? Forever try for the TP, but the Glimpse comes with Tran's there. He stops Kaka. I'll get the kill onto Forever at the same time. Tran, Static Storm onto Dubu, the nuke from Kaka. Ensures the Newbie find a second kill. They may have lost power, but they hit back hard. Find something in return. Haste! Mood Dragon Lance completed along with the armlet. A lot of pings were coming out on him. I think they want to make it go, and indeed they do. QO. He's going to sing the song of his people. Who's he got backing up? Bebby. The arrow timing is perfect. Instant stun from MP, and it's a long one move. He's got the armlet on, it ain't going to save him. MVP. Beautiful setup, beautiful follow through. That's Aghanims as well for MP. So now all of a sudden, this this Marana is going to have some crazy deep push potential. Febby, he's uh, level eight. He's only got the one point into Illuminate, but he can also go for an Aghanims if he if he sees that it's necessary, or maybe he might get a Force Staff in this game. Honestly, I think Force is super value here. But yeah, MVP, they're holding on. They're they're making space for their Naga Siren. They're finding really important pickoffs, even if the trade in the bottom lane wasn't favorable. They still get a very high priority kill and taking Mu off the map, and more importantly. They're not allowing Newbie to walk up to Tier 2s and just freely hit them. They understand the importance of just keeping Newbie on their side of the map or keeping them away from towers. Dubu is going to get controlled by Chuan, bringing him back into the field. Kakas there as well. Now they've got the burst to bring this man down. But looks like it's going to be hard because back up the splitter catches onto Chuan. KP jumps in onto Dubu. They'll finish off the Yoga Magi. Tron from Ferev just holds back the advance from Newbie. Unlikely that they'll get anything more. You can see towards the mid lane, Moo's already trying to find QO. He's got the completed Radiance. Moo doesn't give a damn. Fire versus fire. Let's see who comes out on top. QO holds him back with the ensnare, but Chuan brings QO back with the glimpse. Radiance has been completed. The newbie, they, they don't have, give a damn. They only have 40 seconds, so... Roshan, uh, we don't know what the timer is going to be just yet. We, we have about a minute before we see if it's going to be a long or a short spawn. They can get some damage. But I don't think they're going to be able to do much other than that. I mean, it might be best for them to just rotate to another lane and see if they can kill the tower. Mm. 
It looks like indeed that that is going to be the plan. Arrow. Things onto tier two. It's a little bit too afraid of moving out to me. And that's the problem, of course, with the uh, the ever constant threat of the fact that that Herskar will have Kaka behind him on the Oracle. Yeah, he's got back arcanes as well. He's so farmed. Yeah. Only 18 minutes in. How does he have those items? He has 19 CS. But he still has arcanes. He's four, I mean, he's 4 0 4. He's, he's been KSing, kill securing, and it's uh, paying off the, for the Oracle. Still looking a little bit sketchy for MVP. If they can get like one or two decent high ground defense against uh, Newbie's lineup, I think that they'll probably be fine. And obviously they haven't even lost all their tier twos and it's it's about 20 minutes in. So QO halfway to bots now after attack. the Radiance. That's going to be the real tipping point, I feel. Because as I mentioned before, like Newbie, they have one mode of catch. Okay, P gets the blink and the amp onto MP, giving the vision for John to bring him back. Where's your bash out? It's not oh, going to happen. The blinding light from Pebby. Making sure there's no chance for the RNG. Wow, and he gets an inches. Radiant structures are fortified. I guess they lost a tier two in that time, so probably still favoring newbie at the end of the day. Well, moves come in. Up top to defend here. He's on his own. I wonder if MVP try and make a move. Who have they got? Uh, I guess it's just Fabi, QO, and Dubu. They're pulling in more heroes. They, they want to go. Yeah, first. they can give this a go, but there will be a response from newbie as TP's come in. Let's see how they go about this. QO looking to set it up or. A uh, looks like it's going to be the retreat. Yeah, they're just song and tower onto Moo, but they don't want to try and fight this one. They know that Newbie's already TPing heroes in, and MVP just decide to get the hell out of there. It makes sense. They don't. They don't need to take any aggressive fights unless they know for a fact that Newbie can't be there in force. Because again, the, the name of the game for them is just try to delay Keeper, Elder Titan, Naga Siren. You don't. You don't need to fight if you don't want to. You can keep the lanes pushed. You can be a nuisance. You can force Newbie all over the map. Try to do your split pushing. And that's the other thing too, is, is having two really good split pushers, an MP's Marana, and then Kyo with a Naga Siren in conjunction, and only having like one reliable catch, which is the Slardar, that's really going to hurt Newbie towards the mid-late game. Kyo, the next hurdle complete, as you said, he was he was coming up to the box, finished, so Kyo, especially with uh, the coordination of Fabi's Kotl as well, we'll be able to keep good control across the map. Pressuring the lanes back out, making newbies uh, advance harder and harder. They have been trying to kick off. I mean, as we can see, what, 21 minutes in, newbie have been able to take all but uh, oh, the other Oh, they barely missed top. the scan. They're not going to see them going into Roche. Man, that sucks. That scan was so close to hitting one of the heroes I'm, there. I mean, the thing is, even if they saw it, yeah, it you're not getting there. there. It probably wouldn't you're not getting there with no towers around this area as well to TP2. The thing is, if you see him with the scan, you can at least, you know, go all in on the tower. It is true. Instead true. of just sitting there and being like, oh, we don't know where they are. Because you could tell by their positioning that they were unsure if newbie were smoked looking for them or if they were just going for the Roche. But the, the ward, of course, scouted out the entirety of MVP on the side of newbie. So they smoke up here. They're just, they want to fight so badly right now. They can now. find Q on the back as well. I think Q thinks he's safe. But whoa, Chuan, he's got something to say about that immediately. But the glimpse, oh, it's a bit mistimed. It might not matter though, because Moo jumps in, sentries down. His song was one second that Oh, that's gonna hurt. One second. Dying it is gonna hurt out. indeed, Fabi. You better run, son. He's got a second left of Moonlight to get himself into the tree line, and looks like he will be okay. MP coming across. For how potentially how? Ah, he's got Kaka in the neighborhood as well, so how's gonna be fine. No way that MVP can do anything about this. Still 20 seconds without Qo's Naga. And how he is getting pretty stacked. Seems going to be stacked enough though. MVP are coming across. MP leading the way. Getting towards Kaka, but the sign from Howe and the physical damage, and MP's dead. He did not want to walk into that one. Not the plan there from MVP. KP, he's already got more in his mind. Looking to Dubu. Dubu holds him back with the Fire Blast. That's the help of the Mana Leap from Febby. And second will stop KP for the time being. Now he's going to move forward, and it uh, looks like he can still close the gap against Dubu. Getting the crush off Dubu brought back. Tron says, get that kill to Kaka. He says, okay, as Kaka now hits a mega kill streak on Oracle 506. The buff continues, and newbie continue to get these kills that they need to in order to maintain this early game momentum that, that they want to with this draft. 
still in the driver's seat for sure. And even now, how has the Aghanim Scepter completed? Oh boy. And there's Aether Lens on the Disruptor, so his ability to glimpse is going to be amplified even more so. I like the choice of Aghanims on how. Because it's going to be extremely difficult to push the high ground of MVP, so it's nice to have an item that not only deals with illusions very well from the Naga Siren, but allows you to effectively farm the map when you know that MVP mm. most of the time are going to be sitting inside of their base. Thanks for the Ancient. Yep, easy peasy. Mm. This is a, a really nice choice this game. I'll see how hard maybe want to go, and they still have that Aegis, of course, on her scar. MVP. Unable to break the life of this man as of yet, since he picked it. See how well MVP can hold back this push. Eliminate, that's not going to bother move quite a bit. He does not give a damn, and he'll just stand there, the heals. That could be stacked up by Karka. A line move to hold his ground. MVP trying to stop this, just look at the damage. There's a stop going to come out, the tower It's going to grow hard, but it instantly goes down. Doesn't last long, needs a pill for that. Forward, arrow onto Moo. But this is the power of newbies push. They they just do not care. I mean, MVP can push them around, throw them up in the air. But newbie just continue to hold their ground here. They have backdoor protection now, though. Because they, they killed the creep wave so fast that, you know, newbie are unable to really deal damage to the buildings until the next wave gets here. And we have. There's the backup. The next wave comes in a siege creep as well. That'll do well. It's going to be harder for MVP to take that one down. The siege from creeps not entering the base in the back door protection. Oh, uh, they got it. They got it. No, no, no. I just mean like it's standing close enough to the point where the back door protection isn't activating because the oh, is yeah. hitting the base. It's in perfect it, position. Good yeah. job, Kai. Cardi is actually the MVP of this push. Better positioning than Envy, that cop. That's for sure. We, we, we need a threat about that. Alright, so Rax taken down here for Newbie. Uh, I don't think that MVP are quite, quite capable just yet. The Naga Siren has 3,000 gold, though, in addition to her, uh, her Radiance and bots. I wonder if it would have been better for QO to just back and try to spam out with the rest of his team. Instead of just sitting up there and, and just getting the, uh, the tower kill. It's hard to say, because if you go back and you still don't defend, then it's worse to have the Naga sitting there. But at the same time, if you successfully defend, or at least get them away from your racks before they take it down, and that's with them having an Aegis, then that's a huge win for MVP. So it's kind of like this 50-50, where if you defend, it's really good, but if you don't, and the Naga's in your base, it's like 10 times worse. MVP, though, going for this this uh, Marana Ulti gank. I see what they can do with this here. They are going to meet the side of Newbie head on if they come up onto the high ground. Newbie just clearing out yet again another ancient stack. Lots of money in the bank for how insanely rich at this stage. But it just has gone on move. We'll see how much of a, a stop they'll put to Newbie's pressure, but uh, I have a feeling Newbie don't give a damn, especially He's got the it. Satanic. Oh boy. <laughs> Okay, I don't think he, um, with, with the Oracle, it's going to be real hard to kill him. There's even a, uh, a medallion on the Slardar now, too. And he's got only about 800 more gold until Solar Crest is done. And then Solar Crest, Huskar, with Drow or with Satanic. How do they kill that with their heroes? They, like you mentioned during the draft, they just don't have any physical damage. They don't even have pure damage. They can kill the creep waves, that's fine, but they can't kill the Huskar. They really can't. I mean, this was the the thing when it was picked up in the draft. We, we always knew there was going to be an issue. And, I mean, do we know it would be this much of an issue? Well, seeing as much of Huskar as we have, we probably did. It's, it's not a surprise that Moo is but that's why this pretty patch, unstoppable. This patch is so difficult because there's just so many heroes that are good and so many different strategies that can just counter things that sometimes you just forget about one hero. And then it's like, boom, you get Huskard, or you get Alchemist picked against you, and you're just like, oh, all of a sudden now, if we don't just hold this, this pressure off, we just lose. Oh, newbie, once again, looking for a repeat of the action in the mid lane. Let's see if MVP have a better chance of stopping it this time. It doesn't look like it. Oh, tier three already down to half health and falling quickly. They have song, they have tools and their capability, but is it enough to deal with this? Oh, the arrow's gonna miss Moo, hits onto the car. MP jumps in, doing their best to just clean out the wave. But Newbie, again, they just stand their ground. MVP 
and able to push them back. Well, literally, Feb he can, but oh, I'm gonna smoke up. Maybe seeing if they could try and jump in, but I don't know. They seem to be throwing everything. They're pressing all the buttons, but it's just not working. Huskar just doesn't doesn't care. He just doesn't care. <laughs> I do have backdoor protection for the time being, so that's going to be nice. But Satanic's going to be up in another three seconds, so Moo's just going to get another full heal. I mean, this is, uh, you know, Kyo is doing his best to cut the wave. As you can see, the whole newbie back up to the wave going, hang on. Yeah, no, it's, it's, he's doing what he can. Do. Yeah, right. And it is, it is working to an extent, but... The reality is Kyo needs, like, two more items if he wants to fight this. Because he's not going to be able to fight with just having the Manta style after the Radiance. That's not enough survivability. He's going to get blown up. He knows that the best best solution for him is to just try to stop the creep wave from getting to the base in the first place. I mean, at this point as well, we see MPRing the creep, but that's the that's the objective here. You need to kill these creeps. Do we? All right. A couple of shots and he's down. Amplifying the right click from Hal. Doobie's There's not going to no be able to live through that. Either. I mean, the thing that's really harsh about this for MVP is that Roshan's going to be up in two minutes, so... When this set of racks go down, I mean, I assume newbie are going to be able to finish this off. Uh, look at this, an instant crush into, into death for Febby. Uh, this is the thing, if newbie can get a jump on you, the rest of the team just fired into you. And this game, I mean, 30 minutes in, 15 to 5, two full sets of racks down on MVP side of the map. It's beginning to look like the, uh, well, the beginning of the end, potentially, for MVP, unless they can pull something huge out of the bag. The Huskar is certainly doing it again. Huskar, Drow, Oracle, think it's uh, nothing less than disgusting. And uh, well, you'd be right. It's uh, it's pretty filthy. This is, is like this is big pet status coming in here from newbie, but it's it's wow, working very very well. And they took a, a systematic approach to the game. They saw, all right, we're gonna take Roshan instead of pushing in down towards bottom lane because we know that getting the Aegis is pretty much what our lineup is meant to do. We have this insane physical damage, we have amp. We wanna make sure that we get every single advantage going away before we even start trying to push because as long as we don't give away too many kills, our lineup is gonna to come to its fruition much faster than MVP. And MVP did, you know, I think a lot during the laning phase considering their heroes. I mean, heck, they first blooded the Dro, and then they just said, okay, well, we'll take bottom, we get another kill on middle lane. Everything seems to be going okay, but it just, it was not enough to stem the tide that is Newbie. Newbie. Time to look for the third lane. And I saw the standing between them and Megas. Oh, KP jumping onto MP and oh. again. That damn. <laughs> this is starting to get incredibly painful. I mean, if it wasn't already for MVP. That's only level two amp. That's just gross. It pretty how much, much damage that does. Seems to just be a perfect draw from newbie. And MVP, I think it's safe to say they were not ready for the Huskar. The funny thing is that yesterday you saw that a team got Drow and Huskar and, and like Oracle. the third and fourth pick. They'd be like, how did they get these heroes so late in the draft? But that's Dota, man. Sometimes stuff just changes. Radiance top tower is under attack. Nice, look at this. Back door protection. Yeah, you don't need it. Who doesn't need it? Who cares about that? If you're a newbie and you're dishing out this amount of damage, I mean, how much is Drow giving out? 64 to each teammate. Absolutely, absolutely crushing performance here for a newbie. 64 damage is basically the equivalent of a, a 3,800 gold item. Pretty decent. And again, it uh, feels like we've seen this before, Moo. It's up to the high ground on the lane. MVP, they'll throw everything at him. Uh, maybe bring him down low, but the false promise is there, and he just turns around, jumps onto Dubu. A song will buy some time for the side of MVP for Ev. And he's just getting himself out. Let's see what the follow up is. You've already used the Earth, but then moves straight back up to full hell after the false promise. And it is going to look like Mega Creeps. Favoring the side of maybe Dubu. Oh, my God. Oh, this is. That man disintegrated. There's not a lot more to be said about this game. I can, yeah. I can say as much as that. So when you have Inner Vitality on and you pop Satanic and get off like three auto attacks, you just, you're not dying. That You just go to full HP instantly. And, and with that, newbie, if they want to feel super safe, they can just go kill Roshan because it's up now. But I think MVP are, are more or less 
just contemplating what their plan is for the next game because this one is looking like it's all about in the books. Unless they can do some insane now, Grinch. Dude, it's... Do some insane, 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 insane. The problem, insane. the problem, Owen, is that even if they push out two lanes, Newbie can just walk down one lane and they will never be able to kill Moo. Ever. Like, unless he just gets up and walks out of the room, the man is not gonna die. I haven't even seen more than one time this game where they had to use False Promise on him in order to keep him alive. Another Rose Champ. And they just bought two Lotus Orbs. Oh dear. Two Lotus Orbs. Now, how has Satanic. Like, just look at the advantage they have. I'm looking at it. Do, 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 do. It's not quite to the same extent as the the advantage that Ehome had against Secret the other day when it was a 61 minute game, but it's getting there. And here is, uh, I believe, the push you're talking about, newbie. Just gonna bar barrel down the mid lane. And KP. Moving in onto MP. Move. Getting ready to get us to position. One, two. Let's give it a few. Now, takes down one. MP. He's going to fall as well. There's two dead on MVP. They're on to the tier fours, and GG is called. Oscar, ladies and gentlemen, still getting through drafts at this stage of the group stages. I think it's a little bit different as we kind of roll on to the, the later parts of, you know, the final day of group stage, because first he was highly prioritized, and I've even seen games where he's just